because of my background of using myself in my images and doing a lot of autobiographical works and then getting sort of stuck because I felt I had used all the possibilities of my, of my body, all the ways I can pose. That's when, when this instruction art came in handy because it enabled me to continue my practice as I like it, uh, to be both in front and behind the camera. So I can use a lot of different kinds of things as a trigger to, to new photographs. It can be Fluxus event scores, it can be other artists' pieces, uh, like in the case of, of this uh, piece called uh, About Being My Model. It's after Francesca Woodman, and she had a photo of the same title, About Being My Model, shot in Rhode Island, Providence. And, uh, her original picture is, it, it shows three girls, nude, uh, standing and, and each of them is holding in front of their face a black and white portrait of Francesca. So you can't see who is who, like which one is her, although we do recognize her because of the, uh, the, the ballerina shoes that she's wearing. Anyhow, I wanted to, to sort of make my version of this piece so I did it with my friend Vera, whom I've been working a lot with for this series. And, uh, and we're both standing with my portrait in front of our faces. The thing is that I don't work in black and white. I do color photography. Of course, the, the room where we are, it's very sort of limited color, kind of, kind of like a reduced palette. Yet it is a color photograph. But the portraits are black and white. And the simple reason is that I only have the black and white laser printer at home. I really like the fact that it's like so sort of everyday life object, like bad quality, uh, kind of very simple. And the black and white and the color combined actually works really nicely. I did a show in Vienna, in, in Kunsthaus Wien last year, and um, they had seen the work I had done together with my friend Vera and also using like some other artists instructions as a starting point. So the, the, the people in the museum asked me like, could you think of some Austrian artists that you could work with in the same way? And I said, yeah, sure. There's actually two people. No, I said, there's one person whom I'm really interested in and I actually have started to use his material and that's Erwin Wurm and his one minute sculptures. Then they also said, mm, yeah, Wurm, a man, yeah, but you know, could you also think of a woman? And then they actually introduced me to Valley Export and I also did a fantastic piece with her. But, so Erwin, he was, he was very kind and, and generous to, to accept to have me in his studio for half a day and then I, I proposed several one-minute sculptures for him. So th those are the things that he has um, uh, imagined, like he has a little drawing or a little verbal description. And then in his exhibitions, he would have a pedestal and some props. And then the, the public, the, the audience is actually executing the piece, getting up there, wearing the things and standing there for one minute. That's why it's called a one-minute sculpture. So we did, three of these together with him. Uh, he only said like, you know, one condition, please, I don't want to show my face. And I said, that's fine, you know, I don't often show my face either. But uh, so, so he either turns his back head a little bit away or closes his eyes or something. And this piece, uh, it's called uh, Carry and Levitate, or that's the, that's the title of Erwin. So mine is called One Minute Sculpture with Erwin Wurm carry and levitate. And he was really sweet because first he said like, oh, wait, I put on my coat so I look heavier. And then he said, wait, wait, I put on my hat so I look funnier. <laughs> we have a work here called Artist and Model Reflected in a Mirror. And it's one of the key images of my series 
called Artist and Her Model. And there the idea is that what you see is one person who is both the artist and the model at the same time. And then you also see in the mirror, you also see my camera, which is also in a way the artist because the camera is, is drawing the picture. So it's, it's all, this, all, all these ideas of, of um, how does an artist look at a model? How do I look at myself as a model? How does the camera see? It's all just a reflection because we are actually only seeing what is in the mirrors. And you don't see my face because I'm looking into the camera. I like demystifying and deconstructing the image. That's why I like to show the process of making it. So basically, you see my camera, you see my cable release, this long cord that's fixed to the, to the shutter. And, and then when I press it, that's when the picture is taken. So I want to make all that visible so that the spectator sees that, okay, she is the model, but she is also the author. She is sort of above the situation. She decides, she's in charge. So it's also important uh, because I'm a feminist, like every woman should be, to, to sort of, as a woman, and an artist to take the place that we need to have, naturally, to, to take possession of, of your, your vehicle, your, your material, and uh, sort of, yeah, stand there and this is my position in the world. And, uh, you know, there's a problem that women are underrepresented in in the art world in museums for instance you know women are 60 percent of art school students but where do they disappear what, what happens then because in major museum exhibitions there may be 20 percent so this is something we have to take into account and i think that women artists need positive role models we need like other women artists that we can look up to and and compare ourselves with or compare it to and um, so that it's, it's on, not only like artworks made by men that women are seeing. That's a biased world, if, if that is the case. I don't think about the person in the image as me. It's a human figure. She can be an example of something. In the more autobiographical works that I have done, I consider that I'm sort of lift, lifting the cat on the table, as we say in Finnish, uh, some topic that is maybe difficult to, to discuss. Artists are able to, to take those topics into the general discussion and sort of uh, give a voice to people who are maybe not able to to speak up for themselves. Um, I have this picture called My dog is cuter than your ugly baby, where I'm, you know, giving the finger and holding my puppy. And uh, that's the last picture in a series called Annunciation, or Carpe Fucking Diem, which is the title of the book that I made of it. And, and that, of course, like, it tells the aftermath of, of my long struggle to, to try to get a family, which didn't happen. But I have realized that it was really important that I do speak about this, or not speak, but to show it, to, to make it into images that then those who need this peer support, they can see them and they understand that they're not alone. Um, and now that it's quite many years past that moment, I can also see all the things that I'm able to do that are possible for me precisely because, you know, in our family, it's only two adults and a dog. And, you know, I, I take pleasure of, I, of all those things that, that I can do. And um, somehow I feel like the older I get, the more playful I get. So in a way it's, um, 
No regrets.